the panel. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Raj, for giving so elaborated description of the university infrastructure and all those things available. Uh, now we will have an opportunity to get our mentor and guide from Sri Arun Saksena ji, who is the senior most person, as well as vice president of IRSC India chapter. So I would request Sri Arun Saksena ji to give us blessings and show the way how we should move ahead. Eminent guest of the dais, uh, the person behind the show, Mr. Ajay Singh and Dr. Raj Singh, and the young and upcoming engineers who have uh, adopted or taken by choice this particular profession. I have done 37 years in railway signaling, and even if I am born again, I will do it again. It is so creative. All the time, every time. Uh, technology, techniques, concepts, systems have been changing and uh, let me tell you how it happened with me. When I came out as a B electronics and communication engineer in the year 1978, I was picked up by the Indian Space Research Organization where we did the first Indian satellite, Indian Satellite 1. And suddenly one fine morning in 1979, I was told that you are part of the UPSC examination services and you have to go and join the MS. And you will not believe everybody in row was pushing me hard, please get out. Here you are an engineer scientist, you are standing for a cup of tea in a queue, but here you will be all, uh, all yourself, great person, all support, everything with you. And uh, somehow that decision, although I do not, did not like, but I could take the decision. And uh, that is how I was in the railways. In the railways when I joined, I thought signals <coughs> means the digital signal and the electronic signals and things like that. But I was quite shocked and surprised to see that when we joined, it was all those mechanical signals. The semaphore signals with levers. And as the, the, our previous speakers mentioned, that the train cannot stop on its own. Without it needs some distance to go. It cannot be steered away. And because of those, these two reasons, we felt that signals have to be there, it has to be there. And in the year 1885, we had a very simple method of ensuring that there is no collision, that we permit to only one train in the section. And very slow trains, very few number of trains, and uh, that was manageable with that talking to each other. The station master used to talk to each other, and then one train was pushed into the section. And that is how we achieved uh, train safety. What happened in the, in the times to come is, by the time of 1965, the train densities went up substantially. And then uh, the situation came that we had 131 collisions in this country in the year 1965. Had the media been there, we would have been totally grilled like anything. 135 collisions, today they are three in a year. How it happened? It's exclusively signaling. The signaling, the basic device, in fact I would say the basic device is the train detection system, which will be taught or might have been taught and that is basic track circuit or an axle counter. If you can detect the location of the train precisely all the time, in, under all weathers, under all conditions, the train detection has to be perfect. If that is not perfect, your signaling cannot work at all. So that is the base of the entire system. And beyond that, I would not make it more complex. Beyond that is all common sense. That's why I will convey to all of you, signaling is a wonderful field. It's all common sense. And common sense means that if uh, you are permitting a train to move, obviously the conditions have to be clear, the section has to be clear, the level crossing has to be closed, it's very all, all common sense. And how you achieve it through your circuits or your systems, that is what signaling and interlocking is. And that is what, uh, 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 if you work in a very simple manner, you can create very complex systems. My final conception of signaling is, no station master, no driver. And the train moves on its own stops wherever you want it to be stopped. Most punctually at somebody says you have to have punctuality, you have to be in time, you have to be safe. All this, that means totally automated train system. No driver, no station master and no controller. That is my concept of signaling. 
I do not know what when it will happen, but it has already started happening. When the traveller's <coughs> metro is coming up in Hyderabad and in Delhi also, this will happen in times to come. My only question to all of you is, everyone talks about uh, SIL-4. SIL-4 is the uh, standard for safety and which is called, whatever may happen, the system has to fail on the safe side. And this uh, failure on the safe side, uh, in my opinion, has to be slightly modified in the, in, in the present day context where you have to move large number of trains in a very complex network and uh, with the large speed uh, differentials, different kinds of trains, 130 km per hour, 160 km per hour, 75 km per hour, all are in the same track. How do you manage all these trains? The, my submission would be that you must now start designing a system which are safe enough, not fail safe, safe enough and the system has to be fault tolerant. So this word fault tolerance has to come in now. And that is what brings in the design aspect of signaling, where you have redundancy in design, you have multiple layers of design, so that whatever may happen, the train will not stop. The train will continue to move, because when the, you must have seen here itself, that we are trying to rig up the